Hey everyone, in today's video I have five of my favorite, nope. Hey everyone, in today's video I am sharing five of my favorite math activities to use towards the beginning of the year. We are well into August now and I know many teachers, if they haven't already, are starting to gear up for the back to school season. So I just wanted to share a couple of my favorite math activities that you might want to use in your own classroom during those first few weeks. If you're ready to hear what they are, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. All right, the first math activity I wanna share is less structured. This one is an exploration activity. And now I shared, I think in this video right here, my um, lessons you should teach during the first week of school, I shared that I follow my normal schedule. So like we have math when we would normally have math. Just math looks differently even during that first week. And during that first week, I like for my students to explore the different math tools that they're going to use. So during my math block on that first week of school, the goal is to teach my students what math is going to look like for them. Where will they come over? Where will we have a mini lesson? Where do the tools live? What do we do with the tools? During lessons like that, I would actually show students things like our Unifix cubes, right? Unifix cubes are something they are going to use a lot. So I like for my students to get just like five minutes or so. You could set them out at centers, maybe five to seven minutes at each one, and students can just play with them. We don't need to do any big lesson during that first week. They just need to get used to the Unifix cubes, see how they work, explore, play with them a little bit, and then they need to clean them up and put them back where they belong. You'll wanna do this with a variety of math tools. You'll wanna to do this with your pattern blocks, have students just make shapes and have fun. Geo boards is another good one. If you have any sort of fun little dice game, there they could simply get a piece of paper with a bunch of numbers on it and they could roll a die, color in the number that matches. Anything like that. Very, very basic activities where they're basically playing with the tools and then they are cleaning them up and putting them back. Now the way I like to do that in first grade is I'll do this on pretty much one day, sometimes it bleeds into two days, but basically I would set up centers and I would have groups of students rotate. So we have five minutes at this station, okay, you've played with your Unifix cubes, alarm goes off, let's rotate. Um, especially if you are doing something like math centers in your uh, regular math block, this is a good way to get them to understand that we rotate tables or the tubs rotate, however you decide to do it. So lesson one is let them explore. The second math activity I love to do is actually a freebie I have for you, and it looks like this right here. It is called So Many Buttons. Now, this is one where I will usually do independently, and I will have students get a little bag of these colorful buttons here, and basically they're just going to sort and graph them. This is a simple way to see if your students can sort by color, um, and then go ahead and do a little one-to-one -one correspondence to match up how many buttons are in each color category, and then they color in a box for each one on the graphing page. This is a relatively simple activity that many of your first graders should be able to do, and if you don't happen to have these exact buttons, you could do this with something like Legos or Unifix cubes that, you know, match that color. You could also, looking at the colors here, red, yellow, blue, green, and purple, you could even do this with Fruit Loops. I have that little freebie available for you. I will link it down in the description. It's the simple little graphing sheet to print out and use with your students. After they are finished graphing, I have them put all their buttons back in the bag, so that way the bags could be rotated. I randomly throw them in there, so it's not like every bag has the same amount of each number, so there's no right or wrong answer. It's the first week of school. I'm not looking for them to have the right answer. I'm mostly just looking for can they sort things, um, and I'm trying to give them an independent activity. I usually like to do this when I am either meeting with students, if we're doing some sort of screener, or I can just, again, walk around and kind of check in who can sort by color, who's able to do one-to-one -one correspondence. I can take some quick notes. All right, the next activities I wanna share with you, numbers three, four, and five, all have to do with number sense. During the beginning of the year, back to school season, especially in our kindergarten and first grade classrooms, number sense is where it's at. We need to make sure our students can count aloud. Can they use one-to-one -one correspondence to see how many things there are? Can they order numbers? Can they compare numbers? This is where we spend a lot of our time at the beginning of the year, really developing our students' number sense. So the next three activities all surround that topic. 
The first one is one I've shared so many times, but it is an absolute favorite, especially at the beginning of the year. It is called Roll and Build. And this is in my Number Sense hands-on unit. I will link it down in the description. But this board not only has numbers one through 12 to be able to be used with two dice, but it also has numbers one through six for your kindergarten students and also for your first grade students to differentiate. So basically students will simply roll either one die or two dice. They will have to count up the total amount and then they need to use cubes to stack them on the correct number. Now, I love this activity for many reasons. First of all, if they are using a die or dice, hopefully they are using some subitizing skills to figure out the number there. Then they need to use one-to-one -one correspondence to count up the matching number of uh, cubes that they want to use. Then they have to match that number on the board and place it there. And the other thing I love is we talk about this with our students. Once students build these towers and they're kind of all stacked there, it's a great visual representation of the numbers, right? A two is going to look like this when a six is going to look like this. Therefore, we know six is more than two. It's just a great visual for them. That math activity stays in our math bins for a very long time. Students love it. This next one is another very simple favorite. It is called button jars. And here I just have a bunch of these laminated mason jars with a number on it. I like to have students do this with pairs and all I have them do is first pull a mason jar card and then they need to fill it with the correct amount of buttons. So they are using one-to-one -one correspondence here to match it up. And then after they've gone ahead and filled all their button jars, then I have them order the numbers. So it comes in a few different pieces. So they work through a few different skills here. Those button jars do go from number zero all the way to 20. And in first grade, we would go up to 20, but with some of my students, I might cut that back to 10. If you are in kindergarten, I would definitely have some of your students just do zero through five. And then the other students that might need a little more challenge can do zero through 10. But the steps are pull a button jar, fill the button jar, order all the button jars. And the last activity that I love to use at the beginning of the year is find the fish. This one is great for number recognition and I love to start playing this whole group. I've shared this game so many times that I won't go fully into detail with it, but essentially the name of the game is to find the fish and I will have hidden a little fish behind one of these numbers and students will simply have to call out a number, come up and flip it and see if they found the fish hiding behind it. There are so many ways to differentiate that game and I always start with the number one through 20 in order or if you're in kindergarten one through ten um, and then we end up as we get better at the game we switch up all the numbers so now they can't use their counting skills to recognize each number they have to just recognize it in an instant now way back when in those distance learning times I actually took this activity and made it digital for you to use and I gave a little freebie so I will link that down in the description too here's what the freebie looks like you can use this in seesaw or on Google slides so students could do this independently if they have iPads or you could throw it up on a smart board it's up to you but this one uses just the numbers one through 10 and there's a few different slides here and they basically look at the clue and they have to determine which number is behind it. So this one is slightly different than the one you would play, you know, in whole group with your class, but students have to look at the clue, remove the tile, and then if they are correct, the fish will be behind that tile. Now, while the digital version of that game is free listed down below, the other three uh, games that I shared, Roll and Build, Button Jars, and the original Find the Fish game with the big cards for a pocket chart, and then it also actually has small cards for students to play with a partner. Um, those three are all in this unit right here. This is my hands-on number sense unit for numbers 0 through 20. There are tons of other games in that unit that are very tactile and hands-on for students to really feel and understand those numbers from 0 to 20. So I love, love, love that unit for the beginning of the year. So there you have five of my favorite math activities to use at the beginning of the year, especially in kindergarten and first grade. I would love to know if you have used any of these before and if your students enjoy them. Um, if so, let me know down in the comments. As always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.